How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be reading Painting with Pipette and uh, we're going to base our lesson based off of that using our laptop and um, some photo references. That's why I need this thing. Anyways, um, my name is Mr. Mill and welcome to the drawing mill. Welcome back to another video. My name is Mr. Mill, and today we got a new book. This one's called Painting Papette. I'm assuming that's how you say it, but um, it's pretty cool. I like this book. It's another one from my library around here where I live, and um, I can't wait to read it. I've never seen it before. I think the art looks great when I flip through it, so here we go. All right. <laughs> Painting Papette. Oh, look at that. Some famous artists already. Okay, where should we start? I'm assuming from the beginning. All right. Here we go. Josette, Bobette, and her rabbit, Pepette, lived at number 9 Rue Lafette, Paris. Josette adored Pepette and took her everywhere. But their favorite thing to do was cuddle on the window seat in Bobette's great room. This great room was filled with fine art. There was a portrait of Josette's mother. There were paintings of Grand Mare and Grand Père. There were the paintings of the Petite Babette, Jeanette, Juliette, and Josette. There was even a portrait of her schnoodle, Frisette. One day, Josette noticed something strange. There was no portrait of Pepette. We must find an artist to paint your portrait, said Josette. And it has to be special, just like you. So the two friends set off to Montmartre, Montmartre where the best artists in Paris painted. Easels filled the square amid the hustle and bustle of people rushing here, there, and everywhere. As soon as they turned the corner, a man in a sailor striped shirt stopped them. Those ears, he cried. Never have I seen such majestic ears. I must paint this rabbit's portrait. Josette noticed Pepette's blushing. Her ears had never been called majestic before. Magnifique, said Josette. We are looking for an artist. The painter propped open his easel and filled his canvas with not one, but two button noses and three rabbit ears. When he finished, he waved his paintbrush in the air and declaring his painting a masterpiece. What do you think, he asked. It's nice, said Josette. It's just that Pepette has only one nose and two ears. And Pepette had to agree. So, which famous artist do you think this is? <laughs> Picasso, obviously. Uh, here's another one. Just then, a man with a mustache as wide as a bicycle handlebar strolled by. What a divine creature, he said, twirling the ends of her whiskers. Please, I must paint the very essence of her rabbitness. The man painted a most unusual portrait. You like? asked the painter, motioning to his canvas. Josette stood back. It's imaginative, he said, trying to find just the right words. But you painted Pepette quite, well, droopy. And Pepette had to agree. Another famous artist, Salvador Dali. Let's see what the next artist is. Alright, this one, I don't, he doesn't seem familiar to me, but we'll see. Moments later, another painter wandered by. He stopped, uh, he stopped in his tracks when he spotted Pepette. That nose, like a faint star twinkling in a misty velvet night. As he bowed to Josette, a shock of black curls flopped over one eye. May I paint your friend? My easel is across the square. Pepette would like that, said Josette. Certainly, this artist would paint just the right portrait, she thought. P 
Pipette and Josette hopped through the square until they reached the painter's easel. More and more people gathered around and looked on as he painted a rabbit, flying through the clouds. When he finished, he admired his painting, one of my best works. I like the clouds, said Josette, but Pipette doesn't like to fly. He's scared of heights. And Pipette had to agree. Which famous artist is this one? Hold on. Oh, Chagall. That doesn't really make great sense, but let's see. All right. Next famous artist. That rabbit, said another painter. He peered at Pipette through his round spectacles. What a colorful lady. Balloon blue, pansy pink, and radish red. Was he talking about Pipette? Wondered Josie. Might have the honor of showing the world her colors. Josette nodded. She was, after all, quite curious. When the painter finished, he wiped his brow and revealed his work to Josette. Ta-da! The canvas was filled with splashes, dashes, and dots of bright color. Josette considered the painting. It's awfully colorful, but Pepette isn't pink. Ah, yes, he said, but through art, we can see the world any way we want. Oh, so before we do that, I need to double check who it could be. Oh, Matisse. <laughs> All right. The sun was setting on Paris, and Josette knew it was time to head home. Mercy, she said to the artists. It's been lovely meeting you, and Pipette had to agree. That evening, at number nine, Rue Lafette in Paris, Josette and Pipette cuddled on the window seat in the great room. Josette sighed. She had hoped that Pipette could have a portrait that showed her wonderfulness. With her soft gray ears that listened to her when she was sad, with her heart-shaped nose that twitched when she was thinking, and with her soft arms that held her tight. She had so wanted Pipette to have the perfect portrait. Suddenly, Josette realized that she had to do. And she painted the perfect portrait. It was special, just like Pipette. And Pipette had to agree. And an author's note, which we probably don't need to get over, uh, go over. And that was it. So I really enjoyed this book. I like how it involved famous artists in the very slightest of hand ways. And uh, I like how it was well illustrated with the pen and the, the watercolor. Anyways, great book. Let's see what kind of artwork we can come up with. So let's get going. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that book. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use our handy dandy uh, laptop right here. And I was gonna use this computer over there, but I don't feel like turning back and forth, back and forth, and it'll just drive me nuts. So anyways, I have my laptop right here. We're gonna open it up real quick, and then we're gonna look up a photo of a location. So um, it could be like Paris, just like how it was in the book. We could do London, we could do uh, New York City, we could do Los Angeles. You could do Tokyo, you could do um, Melbourne, you could do any city you want. It doesn't even have to be city. If you want to do Homestead, <laughs> you can too. But the point is, of this lesson is um, that book was mainly set in a very specific location. And that's what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to follow the book. And um, I'm just going to look up... Um, okay, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I want to look up uh, Paris. So let me just look up Paris, Paris, France. And let's see what comes up. So now we have a couple images here, and I'm gonna pull up my favorite. And since my paper is uh, oriented uh, vertically, uh, let's try to find a photo that resembles that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a picture of the Eiffel Tower that appeals to me, that something that I like, and then we'll go from there. So so far, I'm finding a couple. I don't want to scroll too far down because um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. And this one looks like a very interesting angle. 
And when it comes to um, art, um, I think it's important for you guys to understand that photo references is okay. Uh, not everything has to be straight from memory. So you want to make sure when you're doing this, find a good reference. It could be like a postcard, a photo, or something in a book that you already have. Um, I'm going to take this photo of, um, let's see, copy image address. I don't want this bigger. Let's try E. All right, so this is pretty large rather than the original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my laptop uh, right directly in front of me. And then I'm going to try my best to replicate this uh, landscape. But um, since um, it looks more horizontal and I really want it to be vertical, can I make it still vertical? I can still make it vertical. All right, let's, so let's try to make this vertical still. So um, I had the photo over here. Um, you know what? I will try to, you know what? Why don't I do this? Can you guys see this from your computer or from your angle? If I just stretch it out like that. All right. You guys can kind of see. It. I mean, I could take a photo or I could take... I mean, I could take a picture of this on my on this computer and then transfer it over to there, but then transfer it back here for editing. But um, that's a lot of steps. But <laughs> so let me just put this in front of me, and then I want to try my best to draw it. So what I'm gonna do is let's walk through what I see. So I see a river down here somewhere. There's a boat racing towards the water. So kind of like making a scene over here. There's a couple little travel boats here. A couple travel boats here. This one's more bigger than the one in the back. And then you see more boats over here. And then you see the background. You see a lot of trees over here. I'm gonna try to group them together. More trees here. There's more trees in the foreground, actually. This is a different tree. And the more of the same tree back here. And then there's gonna be tons of trees right here. And that kind of overlaps and goes smaller and smaller as it goes fades to the distance. Which I'll draw right there. All right, it doesn't look like much, but this is how I draw, guys. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna call my picture done. And I think it's done, I don't know about you guys. But anyways, that's my landscape. So hopefully you guys pick a cool city. Um, if you wanna do Paris like how I did, you can. 
Um, and I can't wait to see what you guys do. If you guys want to submit your artwork to bmill at sd308.org, I'd love to see it. And hopefully I can show it in the next video. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.